we believe we started on as we were speaking and explaining about the aspect of the spirituality of man and while we've been explaining that we came up to an aspect where we understood that when God created man there is a sequence that God used in creating man we touched on the beginning of creation uh, when you take your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter number one I believe from verse number 26 the Bible tells us something interesting uh, where the Bible tells us of how God created man and the Bible tells us that um, when God created man, he declared and said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let the man have dominion over the fish of the earth and everything that um, is created of God. Now, you'd then come to an understanding that when God was creating all these things, these are the things that he spoke let us create men in our own image and after our own likeness the image of god and the likeness of god the likeness of the image of god is speaking about being a representation of god being a figure that represents god so you'd understand that in understanding your spirituality, these are the two kind of aspects that you have to understand as a child of God. All right. You have to understand as a child of God. So let us work on that and see. All right. Understanding. Spirituality. All right. So when God created man, we open that in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse 26. All right. Genesis, chapter number one, verse 26. And the Bible tells us that when God created man, he created man after his own what? After our image. All right and likeness and you understand that when we are talking about the image of god and the likeness of god i then had to break it further for you to understand that when we talk about being an image of god we are talking about being what representatives representatives of god all right so if we are to be in the image of god it means we are representatives of god and when the bible says that after our likeness the bible is speaking about the aspect of um the character all right character we are talking about the fruits having operating in a dimension of the fruits of god all right the character the fruits of god we can talk about the nature all right the nature of god so when god created men he wanted men to be representatives on him he wanted a figure that would represent him on earth and the bible says in in creating men God uh, made sure that in creating man, he uh, pushed on that aspect of creating us after his image and after his likeness. But remember that he did not end there in just creating the, na the likeness and the nature of God. The Bible tells us of how man was created and the, there is a division of a man coming in a three-dimensional state all right when you read your bible you would understand that man was created in a three-dimensional state uh in that very same book uh the bible tells us that god began to create man and he created man from the dust and when god created man from the dust the bible says that he breathed his spirit god breathed his spirit into man for you to 
to communicate with the heavens in as much as when God created the earth. Many people wonder why God created the earth. And that is one of the one of the biggest misconceptions or one of the things that confuses our spirituality as humanity. All right. So why did God really create the earth? God created the earth because number one, uh, to expand his kingdom. All right. Number two, for him, for for him to have, um, for him to have a relationship, all right, species that he can have a relationship with, because remember, God could not have uh, a relationship with angels, all right, relationship purposes, all right. So there is communication. There comes communication. That is the aspect in which God had to create uh, this planet Earth. He wanted to expand His kingdom. He wanted to come to. He wanted to come to a place where His kingdom is extended. All right. He wanted to come to a place where he, he would have a relationship. He would have a species that is His. All right to expand the family now there are facts that you have to understand as a child of god and as you grow in faith all right there are facts that you have to understand one of the things that i believe you have to understand is in this whole aspect of god creating cre creating uh cre creating man and 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 creating us as 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 human beings on this earth um why is he expanding his kingdom? Where is he? There are principles of the spirit. All right? There are principles of the spirit that I'm going to explain and to be going forth. Remember, we are, we are touching on the aspect of building up so that you can understand the dream world and what it all represents. Now, you, you then come to understand that the God we are serving. All right? So, here is God. Here is God. Here is man. All right? God and man. Now, when we look at God and man, we are seeing that there is a meeting point that men are meeting, all right, which is called the earth. All right? God and man. We are seeing that there is an aspect of man meeting on the aspect of the earth. All right. So man is dwelling. Man is dwelling on the earth. All right. But God does not dwell on the earth. All right. God dwells in heaven. All right. So the God that we serve, he dwells. The Bible, the Bible confirms that, all right? He dwells in heaven in what sense? In what sense? The Bible tells us that heaven is his throne, all right? So heaven is his throne. Heaven is his throne. And this earth that we are talking about is his footstool. So, when God looks at earth, earth is his footstool. But this is where men dwell. And there has to be a communication between humanity and God, all right, through his voice. So, God has to communicate to humanity, all right, communication. God is to communicate through humanity and he communicates through diverse ways which are visions 
and dreams. So in God communicating to man, he communicate through ways of visions and dreams. Like what I said, for relationship purposes and there is communication, he is expanding his kingdom to earth. Why? Because there are laws now, spiritually, there are laws that govern territories. All right? There is a law that govern territories spiritually that believers have to understand. All right? So there are laws that govern these uh, these places, there are laws that govern the spirit and the earth. So these laws have been there. We understand that God is spirit, all right? We understand that God is spirit, all right? So there are what? Laws. Laws of territories. All right? Laws of territories, the first law is um, no, no spirit, no spirit operates, all right, no spirit operates on what? On this earth without a body. So there is no spirit that is allowed to operate on earth without a body. So God is to communicate with men. God is to communicate with men so that men can come to a dimension where they pray like what Jesus taught men to pray. That when you pray, pray a prayer. Uh, that prayer is, let thy kingdom come. That is men that are praying, saying, let thy kingdom come. Which kingdom? The heaven, so that it can start to operate on earth, so that what is in heaven, this expansion that we are talking about, the expansion of his kingdom may now be seen. So, so that is how God had created it. That is why men now came to a place that men had to be put in place. Men had to be put in place. So, man was created and man was put in a human body. Man was put in a human body. And a human body is important to some that may think that uh, your body is irrelevant as far as matters of the spirit are concerned. All right? I would want you to take your Bibles uh, to the book of James. James chapter number James chapter number 2, verse 26. James chapter number 2 from verse 26 James chapter number 2 from verse 26 all right the bible says as the body without the spirit is dead so faith that works is dead so uh, James was trying to speak on a certain aspect and he ended up opening a certain dimension he ended up opening a certain dimension or a certain secret in the spirit. Now, so you, you, you then now begin to understand why God had to create men. Why God had to create men. So then man comes to a place where he's created and in the creation of man, man is divided like uh, what I'm going to be explaining to us right now. Man had now to be divided, all right? So the Bible says that the body without the spirit is dead. I explained some of it last week. So this is how it goes. Man, when, when man was created, he was created, um, he was created with the body, all right? The soul, And the spirit. Man was created with a body, the soul, and the spirit. So, in 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 in, in the book of James, the, the scripture has told us that the body without the spirit. Is dead. The body without the spirit is dead. So when you look at this body, 
this body, the spirit is needed in this body for the spirit to be able to survive. All right? All right? For the, for, 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 for the body to survive, one needs the, the spirit. And all these are divided into different aspects as I'm going to explain coming to spirituality so that you can understand as far as when now God is to communicate with men, what are the hindrances? And I explained uh, further that when, when God communicates with man, remember that the spirit, the spirit is the aspect where we have interactions with God, all right? The spirit is the one where we have the connection with the Holy Spirit, right on the spirit, all right? On the spirit, that is when we have interactions. With God. Interactions with God, all right? On the body, we have interactions with senses. All right? There is the body. And on the soul, that is when we are now talking about the aspect of the feelings, which is one of the most fundamental parts because a lot of things happens around the aspect of the soul. All right. So let us, let us get to it. All right. So let us get to it and see. Uh, what is it that we are we are we are communicating about? All right. So James explains and say, if the body is without the spirit, it is dead. The spirit is needed. So God he had to create man and he breathed the spirit. But remember, his main mandate is he wants to expand his kingdom and he wants to build. Um, uh, he wants to bring a species in which he can communicate with. So. Every person created by God, God wants to communicate with you. But there is a barrier that is now seen as far as humanity is concerned. All right? So we want to explain the three parts, uh, the soul, the spirit, and the body. The soul, the spirit, and the body. All right? The soul, the spirit, and the what? The body, in which you will understand that when we talk about the body, when we talk about um, the body, the body we are talking about, it is the, the physical shell that you, you, humans have, which inhabit or which protects the, what, the, 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 the spirit. The body, it is the one that is organs. All right, the body has organs, the body has senses. That is where you see sense of smell, sense of sight, because you are you are actually seeing. All right, you are actually seeing. Um, and th there has to be a connection from the body in the middle, we see the soul. We see the soul, the soul in which we, 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 we see emotions. All right? We have emotions. On the soul, that is where you operate with fruits of the spirit. This is all on the soul. That is where reasoning is. All right, that is where we have the mind. That is where you have your personality. All right, that is where you have your personality, right on the soul, all right? Then lastly, we have the spirit.
we have the spirit, where we have our gifts of the spirit. All right? In your spirit, that is where we see the functionalities of the gifts of the spirit. And also we have, right here, spiritual senses. We also have spiritual senses in which this division now, to somebody who's already seeing, you see that on the aspect of the soul, there is a lot that is there that can be of, um, that, that can hinder your flow of communication with divinity or that can be of help as far as your communication with the supernatural is concerned. So the flesh can either be hindrance or it can either be helpful depending on you as uh, depending on you as an individual depending on you as an individual so the body we have senses senses that we have we have sense of sight we have sense of hearing we have a touch we have smell and we have taste on the soul that is where we have uh, perception all right memory all right let me try to make sure that we note that down all right so on 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 the soul we have perception all right we have perception we have memory all right we have intellect all right then on the spirit, like what we said, we have senses. So it is the same as the senses that we have in the physical, but these ones are spiritual, all right? So we can boldly say we have five senses, but remember, they are not five. Uh, we have around 12 senses. And on the body, we have five senses that brings expression to the spirit now these now you begin to understand that the body is the one that is the worldly consciousness it is the worldly conscious all right when we talk about the soul the soul is the one that brings us to a place of self conscience all right it's self conscious all right then the the spirit will understand it is the godly it is godly conscious all right uh, we can say spiritual it is the part of the spiritual consciousness now when you look at this you would then come to a place of understanding that if you if we go right now to the book of genesis when we look at how when when god was when god was speaking to when the serpent came and uh, tested adam and eve all right if you go right now to the book of genesis if we go to the book of genesis the bible the bible the bible tells us of how uh, the serpent was very uh, cunning, and the, Bib the Bible says that the serpent came to the serpent came to Adam and Eve and said to them, "Did God really say you must not eat of the fruits of the garden? Did God really say you must not eat of the fruits of the garden?" All right, so that was the word being spoken about to them. Did God really say? And understanding the soul, like what he said, that is where there is the sense of perception and also memory. Did God really say? It means that um, that is the part of one where he has to remember because that is where the mind is. Did God really say you must not eat of the fruits of the garden? All right. 
And the Bible says, Then the woman said to the serpent, We must eat of other fruits uh, of the garden. But God did say, You must not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And the moment you touch it, you die. And that was spiritual death that was being spoken about. The day you touch it, you surely die. All right. Then the serpent said, you shall not die. God knows that if you eat, you become like him. All right. You become like him. Now, what I want to touch is on verse number six, when the Bible says, after information was uh, spoken to Eve, all right, when Eve was spoken to by the serpent, when the serpent spoke to Eve, the Bible says that suddenly she saw that the tree was good to eat. Perception. Information spoken. When the information was spoken, it was processed through the mind. It was processed through the mind. And now that issue of self-consciousness where she had to make her own decisions. So you, you will see that in as much as you have the spirit, you have, um, and God is communicating and God communicates through the spirit. All right. So when God speaks to your spirit, what happens is, what happens is it goes through the soul because remember it has to be processed. Whatever that God would have spoken, it has to be processed also according to your understanding and according to how you understand. That is where many people miss the communications of God. That is where many people miss how God speaks because you have your memory and you, you, you have grown up in different environments with different understandings. So your memory also contributes. Your personality also contributes. Your reasoning also contributes. Your emotions also contributes. The more and God speaks, all right? So in as much as God would, would, would be speaking to you, it might be in a vision, it might be in a dream, or spiritual impulses. Uh, the framework of how your emotions have been built or how your mind has been built determines how you are going to translate the things that God will be communicating to you right there. Whether you are going to translate it 100%, or whether you are going to hear what God is speaking and uh, it won't really come to a place where it will be very clear. Yet God, every time when God speaks, he speaks 100%. All right? When God speaks, it speaks 100%. So the body, the soul, and the mind joins up um, um, in, 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 in communication. Because sometimes, remember, God does not speak in, uh, in a vision that you are seeing something or in a voice that you can hear him or in a dream. Sometimes God will speak through spiritual senses in which there will be impulses on your senses of the spirit in which now it transfers to the senses of uh, the body. You start hearing senses to some that have operated in gifts of deliverance and healing. Um, some you, you would hear some impulses happening on your body when God is communicating with you. And if if, if that impulses come to your body, your reasoning of the soul, your emotions, your mind matters on how you are going to translate what is it that God is communicating in that time um, and in that, in that moment. So on the aspect on the aspect of uh, on the aspect of of the soul when you read your bible uh in 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 the book of um let's go to the book of to the book of ephesians chapter number 4 verse 18 ephesians chapter number 4 from verse 18 ephesians chapter number 4 from verse 18 the bible says and 
they are darkened in their understanding and separated from life, the life of God because of ignorance that is due to hardening their hearts. We are speaking on that aspect of the soul, that in as much as now God is revealing information, but because the heart is a way that it is functioning, the Bible says that they are separated from the life of God because of what? Of ignorance. That is due to the hardening of the hearts. Ignorance that is due to the hardening of the heart. Ignorance that is due to the hardening of the heart. So the soul is very important where the heart is because it influences how how the informations or how the flow of the spirit moves into you. That is why you would see certain people. Uh, if uh, I've seen it mostly when it comes to that aspect where people have to receive. Uh, the gift of the speaking of tongues, you would see that they really so much desire. You can see a person praying, but because they, they, there is a way they are functioning on even the imaginations of their hearts, you would see on the aspect of the effect of the imaginations. If you read your Bible in Genesis chapter 6, from verse number 5, if you read Genesis. 6 from verse number 5. The Bible tells us the effect of the imaginations. The Bible says, when the Lord saw uh, the wickedness of men was great upon the earth, and every imagination and intent of the thoughts of the heart was continually evil. The thoughts of the heart. So the thoughts we are talking about, the mind, the imagination of the mind, it was continually evil. So in as much as to such kind of a heart, God would want to send messages, impulses. He would want to speak. There are distractions that are there because the framework of the way you have uh, channeled the, the, the foundation of your mind, you will not really grasp the full message of God. That is why the word is so much needed into a person. Apostle Paul speaks to us in Romans 12 verse 1. He says that, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but, by, but be renewed by re the renewal of your mind. Be thou renewed by the renewal of your mind. We can look at another example in the book of Zechariah chapter number 12, 7 verse 12. In Zechariah chapter number 7 verse 12. Zechariah 7 verse 12, the Bible says they made their hearts hard like flint so that they could not hear the law and the word that was spoken uh, which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit. He sent by his spirit. So you'd that scripture is telling us that because they had hardened their hearts, their conscience, their minds through different things. It might be your emotions, all right? The infrastructure of your emotions. The Bible says, by so doing, they could not hear what the Lord was speaking by the Spirit. So it's, it's, it's very much possible for you to hinder the flow of what the Spirit is saying, all right? It is very much possible for you to hinder what the Spirit is saying or what the Spirit is trying to communicate to you. What the Spirit is trying to communicate to you. All right? What the Spirit is trying to communicate to you. So, when you look at your soul, when you look at your soul, where there is the mind, where there is the reasoning, there is the fruits. It means everything that you see being processed after this aspect. Everything that is after this aspect. So whatever that you see happening in this aspect of the spirit right here. For you to come to a place where we begin to see actions happening on the body. It goes through this whole aspect of the soul right here that is where most of the things happen so if there is a place that is to be sorted and to be dealt with and where you have to really invest the the, the whole of you and build and feed it is your soul it is your soul because the body will only act what would have happened on the soul what the mind would have decided what you would have reasoned right here what you would have reasoned. That is what you see being accepted or being practiced by the body. Am I communicating to somebody? 
am I communicating to somebody? So, Zechariah said that they hindered themselves from hearing God. How did they hinder themselves from hearing God? They hardened their hearts. You have to come to a place where you, be, you personally now begin to develop yourself as a child of God. You have to come to a place where you now have to begin to personally develop yourself. So, I want to show you something about this very same aspect, uh, the, the, the very same aspect of your the intent of your soul, your spirit, and your mind, all right? Your soul, your spirit, and the mind, all right? Just look at that and say the soul, the spirit, and the mind. The soul, the spirit, and the mind. Amen. All right, so on the soul, you'd understand that how does it hinder when we look at when you look at the soul, when you look at the soul, because this is where you have your personality. This is where you have your personality. You see that uh, if we are to talk about a fear, this is where you find it here. We talk about fear, if we are to talk about insecurity. All right? It, it all happens on this aspect. Fear, it happens there. Insecurity, it happens there. Same now, when you have to talk about issues of salvation, assurance. If, all right, the spirit is here. The spirit, as a child of God, uh, that is where there is your 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 your, your salvation. Your salvation by the nature of your spirit. That is where you have your salvation. Now, the so the reason why I wanted to deal with it, you would understand that all these aspects that you see that hinder people from hearing God. Um, like guilt, all right? We have guilt, we have worries. All these things hinder people from hearing God. We have fear, we have doubt. We have doubt. Um, and all those other aspects. Now, they operate on an aspect where they operate on an aspect where as the spirit you are carrying that eternal salvation God is speaking. It is on this aspect of the soul that there are hindrances like what I spoke about fear, insecurity, guilt, worries. All of these things, they are hindrances to God speaking. How are they hindrances? They are hindrances because, like what I said, on your spirit, that is where we have the mind. All right? On your spirit. That is where we have the mind, all right? We have the mind and also we have, um, on, on, on the mind, we also have your emotions. All right, we have, we have your mind and we have your emotions, all right? So, someone will say, on, on what basis now exactly do I have all these hindrances that you are you are communicating about? Now, as you have the mind and uh, the mind and the emotions both connected to your soul, you would realize that your mind, under your mind, we have fantasies. All right. We have paranoia. 
we have obsessions all right we have obsessions and on your emotions we have aspects like depression anxiety all right we have aspects like depression we have aspects like anxiety now all this when you look at it when you look at all these aspects that i am trying to explain on this moment you then realize that you then realize that there are the, the the effect is is so much big all right the effect is so much big because look at how god communicates all right look at how god communicates praise god look at how god communicates this is your soul and this is your personality and this is the negativity that uh this this might be the negativity that you are carrying and god is speaking and you have guilt of the things you have done insecurities of life fear doubt remember what the bible tells us about the bible tells us about um the bible tells us about um the bible tells us about the, the the children of god um that when jesus went to nazareth he could not do many miracles because of their unbelief that is the aspect of doubt imagine when you have worries and god is telling you something that has to do with faith imagine when you have guilt all right and god is speaking so it becomes now a blockage all right it becomes a blockage because there will be god's voice and god is speaking all right god is speaking and when god speaks it goes to your heart to your spirit all right it goes to your spirit and when it reaches to your spirit remember there is your soul right here all right there is your soul all right and from your soul we talk about the what that body that we're talking about all right so here we can talk about actions we can talk about actions all right here we can talk about reasoning so god's voice has been spoken to your spirit and it has to be acted upon through you your body but it goes through your soul and in that aspect your soul is has obsessions paranoia fantasies that it has which now becomes a hindrance all right it becomes a hindrance to the soul from the soul understanding god's voice all these things becomes a hindrance emotions also becomes a hindrance because while god is trying to speak to you you see yourself you are depressed you have anxiety so the message of god cannot come through you 100 percent because you have depression you have anxiety and all this now is to be turned on the aspect of how much you are going to lean now to the body and how much you are going to subject um how much you are going to subject yourself so that the spirit can have dominance so what happened what, what happens right here is your focus on the spirit must be to what to give the spirit strength and this can be found through uh when empowering yourself empower 
Holy Spirit. All right, empower the Spirit with number one, fasting. What are you doing when you are fasting? When you are fasting, you are trying to come to a place where you quench the, 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 the aspect of the flesh, the worldly nature. Uh, we will speak about that later. And also the word. All right? Why the word? When we are empowering through the word, we are attacking the soul. Attacking the soul so that we deal with dealing with fear. We deal with insecurities. We deal with guilt and we deal with worries. That when the devil is trying to whisper words like what he, she did to Eve, the moment the devil told Eve that, uh, look at the fruit is beautiful, the Bible says the perception of Eve changed and actually she saw that the tree was good to eat or the fruit was good to eat or because a word has been spoken now when a word is spoken it affects the what the soul every word when it is spoken it affects the soul i believe somebody uh listening to me you've come to a place where understanding has been opened to you and you are at a place where uh from this uh lesson spiritual realities as we are trying to understand the spirit and how the spirit communicates may god bless you god be with you let us meet in our next lesson all right. God bless you.